1176 compressor is also very popular on bass sounds. This is due to its compression characteristics and the way the compressor tends to distort when driven. the ratio of 4 to 1 for this sound. Let's try some different types of compressors on our bass sound. Slower attacks with this particular bass riff seem to give me too much sustain. This loses some of the impact during the faster playing. I'm just adjusting the makeup gain to make up for some of the level lost during compression. Blending your compressed and uncompressed sounds using the mix knob can be quite useful for retaining some of the more natural sound of the original bass prior to compression, but also still giving you the leveling effect, and also some of the distortion gained depending on your settings. A common technique for retaining the low end while compressing the bass is to use a sidechain filter. Just setting up the corner frequency for my high pass filter. This makes the compressor less sensitive to the frequencies below that point.
listen for the differences in the low end and the mid presence as I engage and disengage the sidechain filter. As brick wall limiters are built to be quite transparent, it can be very useful for retaining the original sound while giving a very loud and driving bass sound. The fast attack, release and high ratio of a limiter can help quickly control the peaks in a bass signal while leaving the rest of your sound untouched. Teletronics LA-2A Leveling Amplifier by Universal Audio is a studio favorite on bass and vocals. This is due to the compressor's smooth compression characteristics and the tone it imparts on your audio via its vacuum tubes. As smooth and pleasing as this may sound, for this particular bass sound, I think I prefer a compressor that will allow me more control of the attack and release. 